All right, so we got the worn hubs finished on both sides. You'll see uh, this beautiful kind of classic look we've got. Currently, they're in the free position. If I spin them to the locked position. Now, as you can see, our U-join in there is turning. We'll go ahead and take them, twist them back to free. There we go. So we got that and new rotors installed on both sides. Got the brakes back on on this side. Gonna do the brakes on the other side here momentarily. I uh, do have a bit of a surprise for you guys. Got a set of brand new wheels here. So I got one of them mocked up on the back over here. These are pro comps. They are 16 by 10s on that eight lug bolt pattern with a four and a half inch back spacing. So we we're a little worried about the back spacing, a little worried about the 16 inches actually fitting over these JB7 massive brake drums. But they do clear. Let's see if I can get a good angle here. So the drum sticks out a little bit from the back. Um, that's fine. It's going to be hidden from the tire. Um, other than when being viewed from the back. But even then, the bulge of the tire will probably cover that. Uh, you can see how it lines up with the fender here. Sits pretty much flush, which is exactly what my father-in-law was going for with the look of these. He wanted something classic, but he wanted something that also sat within the body line of the truck. Probably could have gone a little bit more in, but that's okay. I think these are going to look great. And I think they're going to give us plenty of clearance up front, too, for the next item on the list, which is going to be some tires. Now, we haven't ordered that yet. Um, we're thinking of doing some 315s, 75s, 16s which is basically a 35 inch tire. This truck does have a four inch lift, so I think it'll be fine. I think it'll fit fine. I don't think we'll have any rubbing. Um, if you know otherwise, please leave a comment and let us know before we drop a bunch of coin on those uh, tires. Previously, we did have some 33 by 1250s on here on the 16 and a half inch wheels. See if we can find the size here. Yeah, right, right over here. Let's see if we can get the camera to focus. So it looked good on these. Um, really, we could put those on that size and that'd be fine. But for the price difference, I think saying we have 35s for, you know, 100 bucks more or so isn't gonna be such a bad idea. And I think they'll really complement those Pro Comp wheels. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and slap together the front brakes. Then I'm gonna do the front steering. I might try and take a time lapse of all that for you guys. And then uh, after that, we're really just waiting on tires and then I get to do the joy of these rear drum brakes. So I've done drum brakes a few times, but uh, never enjoyed it, I'll put it that way. So these will definitely be the biggest drum brakes I've ever done. Hopefully that makes it easier, so we'll see.
right, so I think we found a problem here. Now I didn't think when I ordered the brake hoses, silly me, that the stock brake hoses on a four inch lift are gonna be really tight. So I think we're gonna have to find some extended brake lines. Um, we'll see what kind of price they are. Cause as you can see, this is sitting on jack stands. So this is at ride height. So yeah, it might roll down the road, but as soon as you uh, hit a pothole or lengthen out that uh, suspension, those brake hoses are gonna rip right off. So gonna have to address that before uh, everything's all said and done. And uh, we'll go from there. So. so we got the tie rod on. Now this is the upgraded one inch design. Um, so it's got an adjustment sleeve over here on the left, which we've got all tightened down. We measured it uh, from grease fitting to grease fitting to be the exact same length as the old one. So should get us close enough to get it to the alignment place. We've got a new steering stabilizer. What we're gonna work on now is the drag link from the pitman arm to the steering arm. And as you can see, the old one is quite nasty. Basically what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the exact same thing. We're just gonna measure the overall length here. We're gonna transfer that to the new one and that should get our steering uh, as close as possible to, or align, our alignment as close as possible to how it was before. So go ahead and uh, watch me do that, I suppose. And uh, then we'll be done with the front end uh, steering linkage. All right, so we might be a little bit off, but if you're an alignment tech, I apologize, but that's what uh, the alignment tech gets to fix. Ugh, we're just trying to get it close enough so that we can get it there without burning up some brand new tires. So let's see here, let's go ahead and All right, so that is all back together. Now, how far off is the steering wheel? Looks pretty damn good if I say so myself. I'm sure the alignment tech will have other choice words to say about me, but uh, that's what he gets paid to fix, right? All right, so we got all that together. I don't think I've tightened anything here, so I'm gonna go through this real quick, make sure I got everything tightened. 
and then uh, probably take a break and eat some food. So I've um, been going at this for a little bit this morning. So we'll pick back up when uh, that union mandated break is over. Check back with you guys in a bit. All right, so uh, I want to grease the new tie rod and drag relink and all of that before I forget. And we had a grease gun sitting around here somewhere. So we're gonna try and find that. Um, it was a black Lucas oil one, if I recall correctly. Oh. Nice thing about having a shop is you got plenty of space. The bad thing about having a shop is you got plenty of space to lose stuff. This is uh, just my little corner right here. I brought my tools over from my house so that I uh, could work on this without getting them all mixed up. That's the boat real quick that uh, I was telling you I also found in here. So this thing had 40 original hours on it when I pulled it out back in 2020. Barely been used since 1969. I did have to put new wheels and tires, uh, new axle, rewired the whole trailer, new hoist. Um, but that is the original Hulse Claw trailer. On the back, you got the original Mercury 800. That's an 80 horsepower outboard for those of you that aren't boat people. Um, not an 800 horsepower. I actually got stopped by a sheriff one time while crabbing and he thought I had an 800 horsepower motor on this. But it's not, it is an 80 horsepower with a 7.5 horsepower kicker. They both work. The kicker, uh, not as well as the main motor. Main motor works flawlessly. Interior is all original. I did rewire the entire boat so that I know the wiring's up to par. Um, I installed a battery cutoff switch. You can kind of see mounted in the far corner over there. Under this is a 12-gallon fuel tank. I just built this because in 1969, I guess nobody drank out of cups. So this gives us some cup holders, some rod holders, and just kind of makes it easier that you don't have to step on the fuel tank if you got to tilt the motor up and down because this is a manual tilt motor, not power. That is probably the only thing I don't like about this boat. Other than that, it is an absolutely fantastic boat. I do have a six gallon reserve tank, so I carry a total of 18 gallons when I'm out and about. And I get about four and a half nautical miles per gallon. So does uh does pretty good on fuel for as old as it is. And we have taken it all through the San Juan Islands. We have taken it. Uh, around Fidalgo Island and multiple crabbing and fishing adventures. So there's the boat for you guys. There is another video on that, um, but it's basically just a slideshow of pictures. Nothing, nothing too fancy. Um, I am not seeing that oil can in here, so let's uh, let's continue this adventure. It's possible. But it's over here in the barn, the actual barn. That's just a shop. So let's see if we got anything over here. A lot of times the grease stuff ends up over here for the uh, Kubota here. Let's see here. Hmm. Well, I'm not seeing it here either. So we'll locate this and we'll uh, check back in. So, all right, I'm gonna use two hands and two eyes to find this. So I was hoping to save these hard brake lines, but unfortunately, if you come back here, oh, let's see here. See if I can get the camera to focus. These rear ones are particularly bad. If I get this guy, see how it's just flexing the entire line? So that's just gonna break right off. 
And it's doing the same thing on both sides of the block here and on both wheel cylinders. It is corroded there as well. So, uh, and also up here where it goes from the hard line to the rubber line, it's also flexing the hose there. So I think we're better off just going ahead and replace all of them. That way we know it's all new. There's no point in doing this much brake work and leaving some old rusted brake lines. So we're going to do that. In the meantime, I'm going to get started on replacing everything in here on both sides. New drums, new shoes, new spring kits, new uh, pistons. And that will hopefully take up my time until we can source some brake lines. Well... Got one side done. Uh, it's as much fun as I remember drum brakes ever being. So I did notice one thing on these. One side of the drum is usually, or the drum shoe I should say, is usually shorter than the other side as far as the material. I went ahead and set it up that way. The old ones though, were actually the same size on this side and then the sh they were the longer size on this side and the shorter size on the other side. So someone messed it up in the past. I don't remember if the shorter one goes front or if the shorter one goes back. It went together this way, so um, we'll see how it goes. And if we have to do it over, we have to do it over. But we got a new cylinder in there, all new hardware kit. Had to reuse, of course, the adjuster and the parking brake. Um, couple other pieces but all new springs so we'll work on the other side and hopefully uh, it'll go a little bit easier than this one did well got the other side on just waiting on drums we forgot to order the actual drums so those are coming by the end of this week so I'll be able to put those on then all we got to do is make some new hard brake lines which is way easier said than done and get these extended brake hoses for this four inch lift. And once we've got that all done, tires, excuse me, tires, and she should be back on the road. So keep following along and we'll be driving this thing before you know it and it's gonna sound and look great. So keep following and we'll catch up with you guys next time. Have a good one.